Okay, so let's say the right side of the fixed second law becomes that's the right side of fixed second law, right? Partial differential of c with respect to x times d. That's our negative what? Inside bracket is our so-called negative flux. How fast does flux change with location? It's after we did the transformation. It's 1 over t, d, d lambda. The inside is the capital D times dc over d, dc over d lambda. That's the left side of the fixed second law. Uh, sorry, right side. And what about the left side of fixed second law? That's our partial differential of c with respect to time. That's from your previous slide. It's lambda over 2t minus times dc over d lambda. Okay. So that's what we have. What is our fixed second law? It's given here, right? Fixed second law is how fast local concentration change with time relates to how fast the local negative flux change with location. And then we are going to plug the transformation in. It's going to transform left side becomes left side. Partial differential of C with respect to T becomes this guy, left side. Right side is 1 over T, D lambda, this thing. Okay? So now we transform this, the, the partial differential equation into a this one, a differential equation, ordinary differential equation. You see? We now went from partial differential equations that have two variables into a ordinary differential equation that has only one variable that we call it uh, lambda. Okay, and this is what we have. We have d lambda in the denominator on the left side. We have d lambda in the denominator on the right side, which means we can we have la, we have t in the denominator. We also have t in the denominator. So we are going to cancel the t, right? As long as t is not zero, we are going to simplify to something like this. Make sense? From here to here, we just multiply both sides by the time t, as long as t is not zero. Okay. This is our simplified form. And then what do we do? We are going to do both sides multiply with d lambda. Make sense? Both sides multiply with d lambda. And this is what we are going to have. Minus 1 over 2 lambda dc. That's left side because we times d lambda. The right side with time d lambda becomes d, the differential or the incremental change of this one. Make sense? We just multiply both sides by the so called d lambda. Okay? And then we are going to do what? d on the left d on the right. We are going to do integration. Integration with respect to concentration from C1 to C. What is C1? C1 is kind of the initial concentration for one side. C is any arbitrary concentration in between. Any arbitrary concentration that we... Small c is any arbitrary concentration in between that we are interested. So we are going to do integration left side, right side. So we are going to have this. Minus 1 over 2, put in the front, right? Lambda dc from c1 to small c would equal to integration from c1 to c d of this one. Make sense? We are just doing integration between a 
fixed range starting from c1 which is one end one end one initial composition to small c what is small c any arbitrary concentration in between remember we have that concentration for any arbitrary in between okay this is what we are going to have okay and uh, as we do this now let's put lambda back don't forget the lambda is our transformed parameter it's x divided by square root of t back into the equation okay so left side minus 102 we keep integration symbol we keep from c1 to c we keep but lambda now goes to lambda now goes to x divided by square root of t right times dc the right side because it's differential integration right next to each other differential integration we still keep but now we are going to keep the d here dc over d lambda we do the manipulation again dc over dx dx over d lambda why do we do this because remember that concentration profile for any moment any moment that we get that concentration profile the t already becomes a constant right because whenever you get a concentration profile that must be for a fixed time t and once that happens you that t becomes fixed that's why when we do this manipulation we only do this when we change the dc over d lambda we did the manipulation dc over dx dx over d lambda and what is our d lambda lambda is x over square root of t make sense that's just the trick okay and so we said again for any given time t small t that we get that concentration profile the t is a constant so left side square root of t goes to the front right because this guy is a constant square root t goes to the front and we are just doing integration of x dc from c1 all the way to small c what does c1 mean again okay. the initial concentration for one side what does small c mean arbitrary concentration in between that you choose right arbitrary it's arbitrary value and the right side see this dx we keep dc over dx we keep dx dx with square root of t remember square root of t is a constant which means we can put this square root of t from here to the front make sense here t is in the denominator in the denominator so now it becomes in the front and then dx over dx gives us one so now the right side simplified to this guy make sense and again the diff integration is from c1 all the way to c okay this is what we have and we are going to rearrange rearrange you see this square root of t on the right side square root of t on the left side but in the denominator i'm going to combine them together square root of t comes to down here make sense square root of t comes down here now left side i have one over two t minus integration x dc from c1 all the way to c right side integration differential d capital d dc over dx make sense okay so this is our simplified form simplified form okay i just uh, copied uh, this one from previous slide now integration on the right side integration on the right side we have differential we have integration they will just uh, kind of cancel it out so i'm going to write something like this left side no change from here to here left side is no change one over t 
minus integration of x dc c1 to c. But the right side, the integration differential will just become the difference, difference of the function, right? What is our function? It's d times dc over dx. The end term minus the starting point, right? c equals small c minus when c equals c1, right? It's just the, the integration between a fixed range that just becomes the difference between those two values, okay? And then consider our boundary condition. We said, okay, far away, far away from the where the diffusion happens, the in the concentration doesn't change, right? Not only the concentration doesn't change, the local slope is what? Local slope is zero, which means, do you see when C goes to C1, the dc over dx, which is this term, is just uh, zero, make sense? Far away, the local slope is zero, when C equals C1, it's just zero which means we can simplify, right? We can simplify this equation to something like this. What did the, what happened to the second term here? What happens to the second term here? It, what happens to this second term here? It drops to zero because the local slope is zero. It's d, diffusion coefficient, which is a finite number, right? D is not infinity, D is a finite number, times zero. Of course, the second term drops to zero. Now we have this. Now let's look at here. What does T mean? Time, right? And remember, we are doing this for a fixed time when we got the concentration profile, which assume you already know the time T. Make sense? And this is integration. X, what does X mean? Location, right? C is concentration. We are doing integration from C1 all the way to C. Equals what? D. I put a bracket C means what? The concentration would change with location. And uh, when C equals C1, my local slope, my local diffusion coefficient. Make sense? For here, of course, in principle, this D is D when C equals what? For this guy. For this guy. C equals C1. But no matter what, what C1, the diffusion coefficient is, it's not infinity. That's why this whole term would go to, no matter what this D is, this whole term drops to zero. But this term is d when c equals my small c. Make sense? Because this is c equals small c. And uh, dc over dx, that's my local slope, but where? Local slope, but where? When c equals small c. Make sense? So this is what we have. As a result, our so-called interdiffusion coefficient. Remember, we are talking about diffusion between copper and nickel. The diffusion coefficient will change with concentration. The interdiffusion coefficient for the system, when c equals the small c, this arbitrary value would be, do you see it's just this one? It will, d would be the left side divided by the slope, or I flip. Do you see that? I flip, instead of dc over dx, I flip from dx over dc, when c equals small c. Make sense? That's just what I, what I did. The diffusion coefficient would just be left side divided by slope, but when I do slope, I flip. Instead of dc over dx, now I times dx over dc. But for where? for c equals small c. Make sense? So this is the equation.